Hello and welcome to my voiceover of a side project I had wanted to do in Scratch after watching a video about an old tennis video game. I am a beginner programmer to say the least, so I will be using Scratch with their default coding blocks as opposed to text languages. At the very start I used basic pixel art that I tried my best at for the limited time I wanted to spend my attention on the art, and I tried to make a simple tennis player. I enjoy using pixel art a lot, especially online, as it is simple and you cannot really have better designs than the next person. It was a very easy way for me to implement my own creations. I then quickly created the tennis ball. Now I didn't realize at the time that adding in more pixels after the resizing would be fairly difficult, that I could use the set size coding block, so I apologize if you are angry at me in these few moments. I currently do not have to edit the tennis characters anymore, so it should be fine, but I am still sorry that you had to watch that. On to the programming. I first thought of creating the tennis ball's shadow so that the tennis ball looks like it is bouncing instead of looking like a game of Pong. I decided I needed a variable that dictated how gravity would affect the shadow and where it will go as the ball moves. I then added the variable that dictates when the game is over and therefore when the sprites should stop their scripts. I here start my journey of trying to make the shadow bounce to indicate the ball bouncing up and down across the court. I quickly wanted to go back to editing the ball's textures as, for some reason, I didn't take into account that it made the quick light shading transparent instead of pure white. I noticed this because I could see the net through the ball and realized that I had made the mistake. Here I start editing the variable so that the shadow will bounce up and down. I first created the script so that the ball will instantaneously change its y from positive to negative, but you can easily see that if I were to have kept it that way, the shadow would bounce two ways like dark energy was the accelerator. Also, because of the fact that I am changing the ball's y position by the ever-changing variable, it will act like it is accelerating. For example, say the variable is 1 the ball will go upward by 1. But now the variable is 2, the ball will now go upward by 2 to a total y position of 3. Then the y position will be 6, then 10, then 15, and so on, creating the effect of acceleration because it is changing by the variable, not being set to it. It's funny how I originally learned that by a person I don't know making a Flappy Bird game where the bird is a unicorn. For any of you wondering, I added the repeat after a few blocks of code because the repeating code would act once the ball is at the lowest Y position it can be, so the code once the flag is clicked makes the ball actually get to that Y position. This is where I tested the shadows code a lot.
Now the bug in my code that I was having frequently throughout the video is that the shadow, for whatever reason, wasn't returning to its original Y position. This confused me greatly and to this day I do not know exactly what was wrong. It seemed to be that the time that Scratch processes each block of code and the shadow's block of code that continuously sets the Y position to the variable, but I could not figure out how to fix it at the time. At this time, I was satisfied with the progress of the ball's shadow, so I moved on to the player. Here, I coded in the movement for the player by changing the y and x axis if their corresponding keys are held. In this case, that would be WASD. I then coded in the left clicking sensor, which will change the sprite's costumes in an animation of swinging the tennis racket. Once the ball is clicked while the ball is touching the player, the ball will move in the direction of the mouse cursor. And that is all for today's session of coding. Uh, we successfully completed the player's controls and their swinging animation, the shadow for the ball bouncing up and down in one place, the ball's movement towards the mouse cursor, and the basic setup for the backdrop. This was two to three hours later after I finally figured out how to implement the tennis ball shadow correctly. To put it simply, I coded it so that the shadow will continue to rise until it reaches the wide level of the ball. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed. If you do enjoy my content, then please subscribe or like the video. You don't know how much I appreciate even a few more views than my previous videos would get. Thank you. Goodbye.